Hello everybody, welcome back to another Engineering Statics lecture video. In this example, we're going to cover our second topic when it comes to truss analysis, which is the method of section. So as you guys recall, the, in the first video we talked about trusses as a whole. In the last video we talked about the first analysis method for trusses, which was the method of joints. And now we're going to talk about the second analysis method, which is the method of sections. Before we begin though, I just want to say I hope you guys are all doing good, still smiling, still happy. Well. You guys probably aren't, but uh, here's hoping that you guys are. <laughs> All right, let's begin. So the method of sections is the second truss analysis method. And in this method, we simply cut through the truss members to expose their internal forces. And this is nothing new. We've done this before. Remember that every time we cut through a member, we have to replace it with its internal forces. So let's say that I have this nice beam right here. It's looking pretty good or not a beam, I guess a truss. And let's say that I'm very interested in member BF. I don't know why, maybe it's just it. I like the way it's inclined, something like that. Let's say I'm interested in this. Well, instead of doing the method of joints where I have to go from joint A to joint B, etc., etc., what I can actually do is take out my scissors and cut through the truss. So I just go snip, snip through all the members, and this actually allows me to create a free body diagram. So in this case, as we can see at, at point A, we have a pin, so I replaced it with AX and AY. We have our external load P, and remember, since I cut through this truss at three locations, so we can see one, two, three, I actually have to replace each one of those with forces. So again, anywhere you cut in a truss, we're going to have to actually replace with forces. I cut through three different members, I have to replace it with three different forces. Now if we look at this as a whole, this is great because we have a free body diagram, so we can actually very quickly find those internal forces. I didn't have to start at joint A and then work my way to joint B. I just made one cut and I have a free body diagram where all my forces are kind of able to solve for. Now this was just the left side of the truss. If I wanted to, I could analyze the right side of the cut. So again, it doesn't matter which side you analyze, they're going to give you the same answer. So if you guys cut it and one side is a lot more complex than the other, we'll go for the simpler side. It's always kind of the, the rule of thumb. All right, so. If we were to look at the method of sections, it falls into a very nice procedure just like the method of joints. The first one for trusses, and this kind of goes for everything moving forward, is you always want to solve for those support conditions as your very first step. Now in trusses, we always solve for support conditions before we cut the truss. So if I wanted to solve for the support conditions of this particular truss, I would use this free body diagram on the left before it is cut. Because once I do that, and I look at my free body diagram on the right, well, actually, it's very nice because AX and AY are now known. They're not unknown at this particular point. From there, I can say, all right, I have a free body diagram. I know the support conditions and I have a number of unknowns. Well, I know that this truss must stay in equilibrium. Therefore, I have three equations for general equilibrium. Remember, the method of joints, since everything intersected at a joint, we would use particle equilibrium, which was two equations. Now, in this case, not everything is at the same joint, so we have general equilibrium, where we have three equations, which are summation of forces in the x equals zero, summation of forces in the y equals zero, and summations of the moment at any point must also equal zero. So if we were to look at this uh, free body diagram kind of on the left side of the cut, we can see that we have AX and AY, which we know because we do that in step number one. Uh, the load P is something that's given to us, it's the applied load, and if we look at our truss forces, we have three of them. We have EF, BF, and BC. Three equations, we can solve for those three unknowns. So very quickly, we can start solving for internal forces kind of in the middle of the truss without the method of joints. So it provides a nice solution. However, I said that there's one problem with the method of sections, and that is this. The required cut is not always apparent. In that last example, it's very simple. I just cut it nice vertical. I had three forces. I have three unknowns, three equations, everything was good, but sometimes it's going to be a little bit more complex than that. Now, how can I help? Well, I can't really. This is something you as engineers are going to have to kind of intuitively figure out, but there is some tips. The first one is this. You can cut in any direction and through as many members as you guys want. In the last one, I just did a nice vertical cut, but if I wanted to, I could have taken my truss and cut it something like this. So notice that the direction of this cut changes and it cuts through more than three members. In fact, it cuts through five members. If this was the case, no problem. Creating my two free body diagrams, all I'm going to see is that I have a lot of unknown forces. 
Now, again, this is very rare that we do this because remember, we have three equilibrium equations, meaning we can only solve for three unknowns. If we were to do this free body diagram, we have five unknowns in each one. Things get a little bit complex and we can't solve for every single unknown using this particular cut. So sometimes you guys may have to make smaller cuts and do, say, two separate cuts. Analyze some forces here in the first cut and then analyze some of the forces in the second cut, stuff like this. Personally, what I've seen on exams is usually you need one cut. All right, usually you need one cut. And I have seen a couple of exams now where you cut through four members. And that's the way that you do it because students usually say, I have three equations, I can only cut through three members. That's wrong. You can cut through as many members as you like. And in very rare occasions, if you're only interested in one of the members, you can cut through four of the members and solve for that one unknown using equilibrium. So it's kind of a little trick <laughs> that professors like to do. It's a mean trick, but it's, it's definitely valid. So remember, you can cut in any direction and through as many members as you like. Now, again, three equilibrium equations, chances are you don't want to cut through too many members. So this is what I usually like to do when I'm dealing with the method of sections. I like to highlight my members that the question wants. If the question wants for BF, I'm going to go to my truss and I'm going to highlight BF. And then I'm going to analyze the different cuts that go through BF. And I'm going to pick the cut that requires the least amount of cutting through other members. So if I were to look at BF here, Remember, in the last slide, I was able to cut vertically and have three unknowns. In this one, I cut kind of horizontally and created five unknowns. So if these were my two cases, well, I'm going to go to the one on the last slide because it has the least number of unknowns. That's kind of the goal here. So again, highlight the members that you want and try and cut through as many members or as few members as possible to create that cut. Now, the second one, and this is a really tricky one, and it gets students, I think, every time. We can take the moment about a point that's not on our truss. All right. So again, the summation of the moments equals zero, that equilibrium equation, that's valid for any point in the system, even points that are not located on our member. And this trick, like I said, it gets almost every student. Because let's say that I give them this truss here and I'm interested in member BC. All right. Very simple member. I say, all right, well, a nice cut that will produce the least amount of unknowns is going to be that vertical cut that we talked about last time. So again, students up until this point have no troubles at all. They were to even make the cuts and say, all right, here's my free body diagram. Now, you guys can solve this using equilibrium no problem. We have three equations, three unknowns. So if I were to look at this, I can say, well, I can go summation of forces in the y direction, find out what BF is, and then I can go some of the moments about E and find out what BC is. Now, the problem here is this. It's long. It's a completely correct process, but it's long because we had to do two equations. I had to do summation of forces in the Y, and then I had to take a moment. I had to do two separate equations. If we were to look at this and say, well, actually, there is a point on this truss where BF and EF actually intersect. It's going to be over here at point F. As we can see on our truss, we know that EF and BF actually converge at point F. And if I were to take the moment about point F over here, which again is not on our truss free body diagram, well, my actual only unknown is BC. So I could have actually solved for BC using one calculation rather than having to do two. Again, if you do two, you will still get the correct answer. It's not wrong. But again, the name of the game on final exam, stuff like that, it's speed. Now, if I were to give you guys some general tips about trusses before the exam, it's this. If the question asks for all the forces in a member, all the forces, typically that's hinting that you should use the method of joints, where you go through each of the joints, do particle equilibrium, solve for all the forces. If the question asks for forces in certain members, for instance, if they give you this truss and they say, we only want the force in BC, that's typically a hint that you have to use the method of sections. Now, why am I telling you guys this? Well, in exams, very rarely do they tell you which method to use. They'll just say solve for this or solve for this. They won't say method of joints or method of sections. It'll be up to you guys to figure out which method works best. Again, from what I've seen, if you want all the forces, method of joints. If you only want some of the forces, method of sections. So that's going to be my tip for trusses. Yeah, that's it for trusses. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I will see you guys in the next lecture video.